we're rolling. You know, something tells me I should have done this before I started recording, but I'm actually taking the time to move my iPad closer so I can do this recording. This is Amanda with Brownie Stitch Love, and I hope you can hear me, but everybody's gone to bed and mom's not because I had a steroid shot. So if my eyes look crazy, that's why. Um, I've been battling the crud for about a week now. <coughs> <coughs> I knew I would do this when I got started. Um, everyone in our office has been coughing. We actually sound like a family of baby seals just tossing the ball around in our nose. But uh, I had been dealing with it all week. I woke up, I did a breathing treatment Friday morning. Friday night, I actually swiped my son's nebulizer because, you know, I used some of his Lagomedrol and did a breathing treatment. And I thought that's going to fix everything. Well, it did, but it didn't because I was craving it again by Friday afternoon. Luckily, we got out of school Friday early because we had some bad weather coming in. Um, the blizzard that all my stitchy friends are getting up north, um, our blizzard was, which we pray that this is the only blizzard we get, was about one to two inches. I would say barely a dusting here in Alabama in the part where I live. Um, we got about a dusting of snow, which turned to ice because it rained. How snow comes where I live in the south is it rains for several days, the temperature drops, the ground freezes and then poof, we get snow and we get ice and the ground is like frozen. So the moment that the snow hits, it starts sticking to the road and things just immediately become bleh. Um, so a lot of us make fun of us. Be honest with you, our you know power lines are not underground. I know, I've noticed that up north that a lot of the power lines are underground. We don't have the finances, which I don't understand it, but we don't have the finances to run our power lines underground. Um, all our power lines are above ground, so when we have tornado and we have power snowstorms, it, the ground's wet, it blows over trees with the high winds that we get. Because ironically, Thursday night prior to the snowstorm coming in on Friday, uh, we had tornado watch and, and high winds and chances of hail. So, you know, there's a staying, and I think I've told you guys before, if you don't like the weather in Alabama, stick around it'll change in a matter of hours minutes or whatever but that's not why you guys are here you're here for stitchiness and so i'm gonna say i'm proud i made a lot more progress than i thought i would this week and um i'm really proud of that I'm, i did a new start i'm supposed to be on the stash and start restraint so i think i'm pretty much gonna say that i'm kicked out of that um because something i ordered finally came in um, stuff that I had ordered before Christmas and before the restraint date, literally like hours before the restraint date, uh, came in. But I did a new start because I wanted to be a gift for someone because my original gift, I'm, it's not going to get done in time with school schedule. So I'm going to go to my stitchy progress first. So those for stitchy progress, I'll let you know. And then um, something I'm reading, a movie I watched if you're interested. And a school update and a laddie update because you guys haven't seen him in a while. Um, first, we're going to go to stitchiness. I have moved everything, literally all my whips, back into one box. Now, I did touch this very cute Vera Bradley looking diaper bag. Um, I don't even know if it's your Vera Bradley. I didn't care. Um, I would put my divider folders in there and I would... Um, take a whip to work or whatever. Well, I moved everything back into this box. Um, I actually like to collect these stickers. That's orange beak and a uh, beak, beak, listen to me, steroids. I, I do like to collect them. I do have one for Outer Banks and Gatlinburg and different places in PCB. But um, then I started taking my box to the doctor's office. So there's Olaf and Frozen and there's Doc McStuffins. And then I found this sticker in, where are we at? Kansas City, Missouri. When I was there for a homeless uh, conference, I found this sticker in Kansas City, Pink Chick, in honor of Deborah. And I still had Deborah when I bought this sticker. So, a pink chick, I'm a pink box. And believe it or not, I took this thing today to the doctor's office. And yes, I wiped it off with lost, lost all wipes when I got done. But this little girl comes and says, Pink Chicken. This is like the biggest conversation piece. But it's like a, it's like a traveling suitcase with stickers. And my kids, and there's actually been like two or three that have come off and I've had to take the residue off. But my kids love it if the doctors give them stickers, then they stick them on my stitchy boxes. And I have two. Um, 
one had to have all the stickers removed because they was kind of like, good, like like they'd been washed in the washing machine. But here we go. I even have a puppy chew on the handle. Doesn't that look so positively gross? Looks gross, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, I love this box. So I moved everything back into that box, and as I said that, whoo, hair shot, my whip fell out. So. Um, this is what's going on. All my boppy pillows are falling on top of me. Uh, I'm shooting the video in my living room because my study looks like somebody threw up in there. Because on Saturday, I had to write a paper for six hours. So, ah! Um, let's see. This pattern is by Pine Mountain Designs and it's needle art by Sandra Workman. And it's life does not have to be perfect to be wonderful. And um, I thought that that was cute. Um, I'm going to actually get a friend of mine to try to make that into a pillow. Or maybe even make her into one of those cute little, you know, stand-up boxes. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to this. All I know is it's just precious. And the purpose of this was this was on clearance at, good lord, y'all are getting hair and chest flashes and my necklace, which is on backwards. Um, y'all are seeing all that. And then let's see, since we all like to share our needle minders, I am using the one and only Kermit and Miss Piggy. And I had it done in the green from Minding My Minders. Now, I have done the weirdest thing. I am not using a frame or a hoop. I'm just stitching this in hand. And I'm finding out that it's most agreeable with me because, I'm gonna put this back on here, because it's a, a tiny piece and I just, I don't know, it's not worth it. I was actually gonna edge my edges and I haven't got around to doing that either. I just basically picked it up and centered it and went. But the purpose of this was to get me familiar with linen again. And it came with no thread, instructions, pattern, and linen. But here's my progress. Have to be perfect. I just love that, isn't that sweet? Now it calls for the following colors and it is DMC friendly which makes me happy. Um, I'm not against any other threads, but where I live, specialty threads are just not easily found or acquired. They have to be ordered. Um, there is a beautiful cross-stitch shop that's an hour away, but with four kids and college and my daughter playing basketball right now, just an hour away trip is just not easily, it's just not easily done. God, I just now noticed my hair looks longer on one side. But I'm serious, y'all. It's natural curly, so this is what my hair does in the weather. It's poofier and straighter over here, and it's curly over here. Not that y'all care. Y'all hear about stitching. But um, it requires 3833 Raspberry Light, um, which I substituted because y'all know I am sentimental as I'll give out. I don't even know the maker of this thread. I just know that this is thread that was my grandmother's from when she was alive. And when I inherited all of her stitchy stuff, I think this is old DMC. I don't know. I really don't know who makes this. This might even be J&P Coats because the, the, the labels are messed up. It says 1106, so who knows. But it's like a pink, and I looked at my raspberry pink, and it was pretty, but I liked this better. And let's see what we've got. This is... 11013. It's like an avocado green. Um, that is in DMC requirements was avocado green very light. <coughs> and to me, that looks like an avocado when you cut it open to make guacamole, which is the best. Um, it's 471. And it's actually for these little green leaves on the flowers. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to color green I like. Which, find this funny in a little history trivia for you. This was literally the color of all the showers and the bathtubs and the refrigerators and the stoves in the 70s. So, um, if you grew up in a house, and that's actually, and I know that the camera's not going to show the true color, but I know that this color right here, this avocado green, um, I mean, seriously, look at it. This avocado green right here, and I'm, I'm actually filming on two cameras, so let me see if I can't get them closer together, so... They get kind of the same footage because whichever one uploads to YouTube the quickest, my iPad or my cell phone is going to be the one 
that does my video. Um, these were the colors of the stoves, the refrigerators in the 70s. So if you grew up in a house, some avocado green, harvest gold, or steel blue. Holla! Because we survived the 70s, people. And we were good for it. Also, I used a red. I can't tell you the color, but it's very similar to the, which I always get tickled, 321 Christmas red. But believe it or not, this is some of her skeins from her uh, Christmas napkins and Christmas tablecloths. And I have laundered them at Christmas season, so I know that they're color fast. So it's like a very bright Christmas red. You see that? Ooh, one camera, it looks red. And one camera that I am videoing, it looks orange. Weird. Weird. Totally weird. Totally weird. I'm going back and forth. This is too fun. And then I chose a turquoise. Um, the turquoise was kind of a, let's see, they recommended a peacock blue light. Well, that's pretty. But to me, this aqua blue just pops out so much more. And it is quite the rage right now. Kind of like the avocado green and look green. Listen to me. Harvest gold and seal blue. So I said, you know what? Let it show the colors. Now these colors on both cameras right now match. Who knows? I've talked for 11 minutes. I bet this thing kicks me off. Because it's goofy. Alright. So that's that. Sorry, I have to put those back in the package. I like how Stitch and May says, y'all have to give me a minute because I've got to do. Okay, I moved all my Frosted Pumpkin stuff to my folder. I think I had showed this to you guys before, but it's now in a folder. It's got my patterns and it's got my color list and, you know, my instructions and everything. And I moved it to a folder because I did have it in thin binder and it did take up a lot of space in my folder. I am still at the same spot on the Once Upon a Time sampler, but excitingly, I am leaving tomorrow evening to go on a conference, and I'll just be gone for one night, but I am literally going to lock myself in that night and add beautiful blue water and sparkly clouds into my Peter Pan and be done with Peter Pan. I'm trying to do a whip a week, and... Um, that fashion works, but at the same time, if it irritates me, I will focus on it. Um, my conference, luckily, is at the hotel where I'm going to be staying. So I'm literally going to drive to my conference, order room service, and get to stitching. Of course, after I take a nice hot shower, because I will be the only one there using the hot water. Yes, and you have four kids. <sighs> no small third world problems who knows I'm not trying to sound greedy but hot shower is a huge deal in this house it's like we can't ever have a hot shower and I have to time kids when they take baths I mean oh my gosh seriously okay I saw a video where someone had suggested using a light box to go underneath their black cross stitch so I tried it and I know that it's gonna look seriously psychedelic but I love this and I was all 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 about getting me a lot. Oh, I'm going to give me a lot more. And I actually do have some clips that I could slide it over here and they would fit. But that ain't going to work. <coughs> but this is my pattern. All you need is love. And I actually started working on it today at the doctor's office, but I didn't have my light box. This is not cool. This, my friends, is a Crayola. Oh my gosh, what's this thing called? All I know is it's called mine. It's a Crayola art pad. And I'm going to turn the light off so you don't have a glare. Um, you could probably find these at the thrift store because many moms like me probably wouldn't care what it is. They would just be glad to be getting rid of it. Um, I love Crayola and I love the things that they create. It came with templates you could do like, you know, that was the glow pad that stuck on the wall. This is something else. This is like a light up drawing desk and um, through the two years in its existence at my house, the stencils are gone. They've been tossed aside. So, when um, I did a mandatory, if it does not have a space in your bedroom, 
if there's no place for it to be put up, then it's time for it to leave because it's not special enough to you to have a place. It does not belong on the floor. Um, so this was one of the things that my son said, hey, I want to get rid of this. And you know what? I should donate it. I should. But you know what? This is my light box and I'm going to claim it. And I was very happy about that because it's the little things that make us glad. Let's see. That's my agreement to pay my doctor's bill. Y'all don't want to see that. I paid her. Copay was $30. Now, I do. I don't want to sound crazy and holy, but I do give glory to God for that. To have health insurance to be able to pay for my medicine and pay for my um, prescriptions and my copay, which was $30. Love, love, love the fact that my insurance copays are $30. Um, pay's not that great, but you know, nobody's ever completely thrilled with their pay. But I absolutely love love the cost of our insurance and the cost of our copays and I think my prescriptions were 70 bucks because one of my medicines was expensive that is not what you guys want to know okay haul and I'm gonna do another video with my minders I think that's the best thing to do since I kind of flatten line myself on minders um, my goal was to make minders this weekend I did not put into the fact that I had um, of homework. Uh, I think I told you guys the impact of my classes. I have learned that there is a Bible app and so I am studying Old Testament right now in my college courses and I was able to listen to the Bible on my iPad and cross stitch and that is called multitasking people. That is getting it done at the same time. Let's see if I can put all this together. Holy mackerels, Batman, where's the pattern? Oh, that's not funny. If I have to pause this video. Oh, I'm gonna have to. That is going to tick me off. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pause one, and I'm gonna let the other one run, and here's the thing. If the iPad video loads, and if you see Laddie dancing, on the screen let me know I'm gonna go get the thing I was gonna show you guys Now that you guys got a booty shot, I will start the other camera. Okay, that absolutely stopped. So we'll start it up again, so maybe I can link the two somehow. Okay, I cut off on the other one, so if you're on the other one, sorry. Um, I had gotten this in the mail I ordered this stuff kind of at the same time. And um, instead of saying that I was going to be good on my stash and start restraint, I started buying like it was Armageddon. And that's wrong. That's wrong. It's the wrong perception. And even my son said, okay, something's got to give. And he's right. It does. And he's 12. And it's not because I'm not spending money on him. I mean, he's he's actually fine going to the mailbox because it's, you know, at my house, it's right of passage to walk across the street down the, because we're not like right on this road or anything. We have to walk pretty good distance to get, not a small distance to get to the mailbox. But um, to him, it's like, come on, mom. 
So, I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, I'll take it with Stripe. So, first thing that I did, um, I don't know if I actually uploaded the things that I wanted to stitch, but um, I did Mermaid of the Pearls. I wanted to do her for my Mirabilia stitch. And the more that I looked at her, the more I looked at her, I thought she's beautiful. But at the same time, I love Merida. I love the Little Mermaid. I love redheads. I'm kind of partial. Um, so, I decided to... My son stuck down his teacup because I grabbed one. And this is sweet tea. I should be drinking a Dr. Pepper. And it is midnight at my house. And I do have to work in the morning. But I'm on steroids for bronchitis. I don't know if I guys told you, told you guys that. Ha! We'll see. All right. So I got to shop in on eBay because that's a horrible thing to do when you're stressed or on lunch at work. And I found the following pattern, Mermaid. And she is Emerald Mermaidia. Emerald Mermaid by Nora Corbett. She is beautiful. She's 233 by 134 stitches. She'll be 14 inch by eight and a half inch. And she's done on 32 count story point linen. Which when I looked at it, I really didn't like it. So I'm in a huge debate about that right now. But I found her and um, all of her beads which I'm hoping I've got them all. I've actually got to sit down and check them. And um, in the, in the pattern came with her and all of her beads, which I will, and the Krennic, which I will show them to you right now. I was very proud of the price that I paid for them. And let's see if I can do, she's 00561. Let's see if I can hold that up so you guys can see that. And then the next one, I'll try to push these up. 02001. And this one is 02031, which I absolutely love that. Come on, mine reminds me of a, a true peridot. And 03013, which to me looks like a burnished copper. Like a burnished copper, like one that's been discolored through time. Um, beautiful. I mean, it really, let's see if I can do that. Yeah, that works better burnished copper color and then the krennic is 600 two things a very fine krennic metallic krennic to me which i think the pattern calls for like it says number four braid too you know when it comes time i'll make sure that this is what i need and if it's not i'll do it maybe whoever kitted this up and sold it on ebay thought that this looked better I will put her opinion into consideration, but I'll also make sure that I have the right stuff. Either way, got a good deal. And then I went on 123 Stitch and found, okay, Mint Green Belfast is 32 count, 13 by 18. I just thought it was beautiful. Um, I don't know, it kind of looks like you mixed like light mint green paint and then you put like a white to it um it's really pretty and i thought she'd just pop on that and my other mermaid is in a green who knows you know what that's not gonna be big enough i have been bamboozled i think i've been bamboozled who knows i don't know maybe it is big enough i don't know i've got to actually sit down and measure it but at the time when i measured this um, feeling mighty low. Let me see if I can put something behind it here. Anyway, the seller that I got my Mirabilia pattern with fries from Stitching Beneath the Cross. Um, they're on eBay, and I thought their prices were fairly, very reasonable. Um, and because you want to justify shipping. From one, two, three stitch, and I'm trying to fast. I ordered me the Mill Hill Spring Bouquet Collection of the Tulip Egg. Um, I've always wanted to have an Easter tree as something that I've always wanted to do. No, it's not a relevant, real, it's not relevant at all. But that's just something I've always wanted to do was have an Easter tree. 
and I've never done it. So I found felt patterns that are on Pinterest and I have tagged them and it's in its egg shape and I do have an egg cutter because of scrapbook years and still have all my scrapbook stuff because I still kind of do that. Um, I have patterns to cut to make geometric shape eggs where you, you know, iron the adhesive panel on and you stiffen them and you have dimensional eggs to hang on your tree and then I have egg cross stitch patterns which I have gotten and I'll have to show them in pattern hauls. Um, those were by, um, who were they by? And I'll explain what's wrong with my brain. If you need to know, it's punking me. So I read that in a book and absolutely loved it. And I told my husband about it because I'm 41 and I'm not wanting mind telling you. Because I feel that each year that we should uh, appreciate our age instead of complaining about it because, you know, we're blessed to live the years that we have. Um, the next thing I did was, um, thank you, the Stash Queen. You are a bad influence. Um, I ordered from Moe's sale. Moe's Floss went to the website, and yes, I thought I was going to die. So I just stacked up on everything. And... I guess they I don't know, maybe they were closed for Christmas. I don't know, but I ordered the bundle package. And I got two of the the floss called Ann. What do y'all think of that? That is just absolutely. And um, if you can see them, it's like a lime green to a whitewash to a purple. Like an eggplant purple that's been whitewashed. Just, oh, it is called Ann. And I went ahead and grouped these together by their colors. So that um, it would be. And we have Draculaura, which I absolutely love. I have so many things I'm thinking about putting Draculaura on. Um, this is like a, it's not a Pepto Pismol pink. That would actually look really good on my other pattern I'm working on right now with that pink. Um, it's Draculaura. And this is their bundle thing for like 20 bucks or whatever. This I love because it's lilac. And it's several shades of lilac. One camera is letting it be true to color. The other camera is looking at it like it's like a whitewash pale pink. So this is like a lavender lilac cover. And let's see the next one. Come on. It's playing nice together. It's called hibiscus. Which, if you look at it, like a hibiscus bloom in the sunset. Isn't it just beautiful? And to me, this is like a silvery gray blended into a pink, like a, just a pastel pink, like hibiscus flower. I just, I don't know. It's just beautiful. It's random. And actually, now that I went on his website, I'm like, oh, I love that color. I love that color. But um, I'm actually going to train myself to see what I can do with these first before I get off hunky creative. I may actually use this for Peter's, Peter Pan's clouds. You never know. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, this is like called Oasis, and I'm like talking about it and not telling you the color. And it's like a baby blue color. And this was their grab bag. 20 25 So, I'm up to 50 bucks. No. I'm up to 70 bucks, 75 bucks, which is terrible. Desert Storm, which is a coral cream to peach. It's like a corally pinky peach. It's beautiful. I mean, it really is beautiful. So, one camera follows it true to life. The other one follows it. I don't know. It's completely miscued. So I'm praying that the iPad loads because I just can't get over the difference in color between my Samsung Galaxy phone and my iPad. And this is a peach cream and a khaki. khaki. And trust me, I love my Galaxy phone, so I'm not I'm not hacking it. But when I hold the video up right now for the for my phone, you can't even see the peach. It looks like a yellowy. Looks like a dog peed on it. Not that y'all want to know that. It looks like a dog hiked its leg on it and it dried up like right in there. Like right in there. It looks like a dog peed on it. 
That's terrible. I shouldn't tell y'all that, but that's what it looks like. On the phone, on the other phone. This just absolutely, believe it or not, don't laugh. I have a sweater, this pattern, and so when I got it, I went, oh my gosh, I could darn that sweater. Its name is Mongoose. Is that not a name for a color? What you gonna name this color, baby? Mongoose. I'm not making fun of my <laughs> I'm just it's like, how do you do it? How do you do it? Mongoose. No, don't fall. Okay, I'm not an expert on dog pages, so you know, but you know, we've had some issues. Everybody makes mistakes, and I just sat there and dropped, so you're going to get another hair shot. Holy mackerel. i got to show you this picture. I just kicked this God blessed thread underneath the table. Massive hair shot. Roots are done. Okay. Martha Jones. If you're a Doctor Who fan, you will know why my kids got an absolute kick over Martha Jones. She was the girl who was the doctor who fell in love with the doctor after Rose was left. So, and I have now been challenged by my children to go on his website and find Rose Tyler, Amy Pond, River Song, and Clara Oswald. And there's one more, Donna Noble, my favorite spicy redhead. So, Martha Jones is a beautiful light pink coral into a champagne. Beautiful, beautiful. And it's the champagne the cars in the 90s were painted with. You remember when they used to paint Toyota Camrys in the champagne color? That's irrelevant, but I wanted to give you a color association. This right here reminds me of macrame of the 70s, and its name is Condor, and I'm not criticizing it because I thought this color scheme is beautiful. And sometimes in the fall, you will find this uh, in trend and blending together. You have an orange and a brown. It's an orange and a brown blended together, if you could see this dye. And a cream at the bottom. Uh, a lot of time in the fall, you will see these colors together in a pattern. And years ago, if your mom did macrame, she was very likely to make owls with those wooden rings for eyes out of these particular colors because this was the color scheme back in the 70s. And this, I'm not saying that this floss is dated. I'm not. I actually love these three together. And if you were doing a sunset, you know, or anything like a color variation, that would just, that would be absolutely gorgeous. And this one, I think, was stuck to another thread, and I'm not going to complain, but I only got one. And it's called Jade. It's mint green, gray, and a light creamy white. Together now, see this iPad does not do it justice right now. Let me see if I can. God, is there something I can? There. Now yeah, hold it up to that so you can see Jade. That's just I don't know. To me, that's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, and I only got those, and I was fine with it. Now this right here is the unveiling. Just so you know, the only fancy stuff I own is pretty much my. Pandora bracelet. I don't spend a lot of money on clothes. Um, there are things that my aunt told me to never go cheap on. And I have adhered by her words. Ooh, this is going to be fun. <coughs> For women, she says, don't buy cheap bra or cheap shoes or cheap makeup or skincare products because um, you need a good makeup cleanser to get the makeup out to, you know, keep your skin. You need a good moisturizer at night. And um, don't buy cheap shoes because you're going to have to stand on your feet for the rest of your life to walk where you need to go or do the work that you do. So make sure that you have a good support to hold you up. And you girls, you girls need a, excuse me, good support to hold them up. And I just shook my boobs on YouTube. I am so sorry. But those are three things to never go cheap on. Other than that, I'm a pretty thrifty shopper, clearance racks, whatever. I do make sure that I look presentable. Um, but I'm comfortable. I'm, I'm me, and I'm grateful that I work a job where I can dress like me. 
no, I don't go around with like hippie bands on my head, and there's nothing wrong if you do, but, you know, I think if I walked into work one day with that on me, they would have me checked, because that would be completely off. The last thing I bid on, no, it was like eight days away, so I bid on this like on a Friday before the stash restraint, and I won it, so... No, Wednesday before the stash restraint, and I want it. Now, I have mixed emotions and confessions about this and the purpose of it all. But the bid was for $40. Yes, I spent over... Yeah, I need therapy. I really do. Because I spent over like $125 on all this stuff. Um, And that's shameful. But the bills are paid. The kids are fed. They have stuff that they need. Paid a humongous vet bill. I'll tell you about that shortly. So, I mean, yeah. We've got what we need. So, but Lord, forgive me because this was wrong. Uh, my daughter is a huge fairy fan. And I found this pattern. And um, the cheapest that I could find this pattern for sh with shipping was like 20, 25 bucks. Everywhere that I shopped. It was going to be 25 bucks, And she absolutely loves fairies. And to me, that just is beautiful. It's going to be a booger to stitch. Because look at that. That navy. No doubt I'll be using my light box. <coughs> but I found like 20 25 bucks that I could find this kit. Didn't matter if you had a coupon. And I wanted to buy before the restraint was over with. And I went on eBay and I was shopping. And I found this pattern. Because the name of this pattern is Twilight Silhouette. And to me, that's like the big queen fairy telling Tinkerbell what to do. I mean, it's beautiful. You know, the secret of the wings, power of the wings, when she's telling her that, you know, she can heal her wings. Obviously, I spend too much time watching Tinkerbell. But there are worse things your kids can get obsessed with. So, I went on there, and I found for a bid for $40 flat. No, wait. Oh, it was buy it now. Sorry. And it was Wednesday before the stash restraint, so so far I'm still being good. Because I told my son, I'm grounded. And he went, whatever. For $40, free shipping, you could get all three of these. And I felt like, to me, that this was a whopper of a deal. And so, I'm going to be honest with you. I have no attachment to one of them. And it will probably leave soon. This one, I love. Because I have a thing for The Little Mermaid. I have very first favorite Disney movie that I ever watched was Little Mermaid, and this is Disney Dreams. Now, granted, I actually went to Hobby Lobby one day and found <coughs> Peter Pan flight off to Neverland, Neverland flight for $12. So, whoever, if you sold this to me and you got it for $12, then congratulations, but I just really feel that they were just getting rid of their stash. This is the full kit. Disney Dreams Collection, number 52507, by Thomas Kincaid, and MCG Textiles, and it's the full kit, 16 by 12, Little Mermaid. So, for $40, I got my Tinkerbell, well, I call it Tinkerbell, and my Little Mermaid. And I didn't tell you, but the item number is 7035296 on the Twilight Silhouette. Look at that. Ah, it's already started, which is goofy because probably what I will do is do like Deborah did. I will email MCG Textiles <coughs> and I will ask for the DMC conversions because I'm just worried about that. I like my DMC falls. And included in that package, which I love it, but I don't love it enough to beat myself up over this. And this is done on linen, oh my gosh. Oh, that's done on linen too. Oh, I don't, oh, that one's done. Okay, this one, the Little Mermaid is kitted up. Now, that's not right. With like an off-white, who knows, Ada. And it says 18 count, oh, that's gonna change. Oh, that is so definitely gonna change. 18 count Ada. I'm not against 18 count Ada, but I am because I don't know. I'm not old, but I'm feeling it when I look at 18 count. Um, that's 18 count Ada here. 
And this is 28, oh, this is so much making me happier. Disney Dreams Collection Fantasia. And this is the 28 count fabric floss, 16 by 12 finished. And it's Fantasia with Mickey Mouse Disney. Thomas Kincaid Disney Dreams Collection. And I'm serious, that's a whopping awesomeness. Who knows, maybe these come from Disney World, who knows? I don't know. I need to go back and look at my Off to Netherland kit. I got that kit for like $10. But I got all this with free shipping for 40 bucks. And it came from the seller in Sacramento, California to Alabama. So, not too shabby, people. I'm happy. And it's in a priority mail envelope. So, I'm happy, I think. For the price that I did extremely good, well, I probably turn around and sell this kit on eBay or Stash and Load. One of them will, pro will probably not stay with me because, yeah, I gotta make some of my money back because I am feeling mighty guilty. As a matter of fact, I cleaned out my packs and my pre-packs and um, got them all separated and kneaded up and I'm sorting through those, and I may have a giveaway real soon because I got some really cute stuff in there, but my stitchy eyes are bigger than my stitchy hen stomach. Is that the best way to say it? Who knows? Final note, and um, maybe I can show this to you guys, and maybe you'll get it. Um, behind me, favorite picture ever. This is um, George Thoreau, according to my 12-year-old. His last name is Sorot. If that's right, correct me on it. But I think it's George Thoreau. I'm gonna hope it's George Thoreau. Cause if not, he walked around with the name Sir Rot. But anyway, it's um, evening on the island of the La Garden of La Grand Jete. And I actually <laughs> looked up at the local library and got a huge coffee table book of George Thoreau Surratt's artwork. And I found out that I had like the girl with the posies and the little girl right here in this picture. You can't see her. She's in the, there we go. I'm going put my finger on. Stop right there. That little girl. If you ever get a chance to look at that painting, look at that girl because there is such image and dimension in that paint that the longer that you look at her, creepy, her face will appear. But to me, I just think this was a grand era. I grew up and my mother loved the movie Somewhere in Time. If you have time to watch that movie, watch it. Carry a tissue because it's beautiful, but it's, it will make you cry. It seriously will make you cry. And, but it's got Christopher Reeves and Jane Seymour in it, and it is beautiful. But when I think of Somewhere in Time and where it was filmed at that lake resort, who I forgot where it was filmed at now because I haven't seen it in years and maybe I need to try to find it on YouTube after I say goodbye to you guys because I'm supposed to be packing a suitcase for my conference. That to me looks like that scene from that movie. So it's beautiful. Um, last but not least, the things that's going on in my house. Went to the doctor, got diagnosed with bronchitis. Shocker, I'm on steroids, but they seem to be working but boy, that steroid shot is burning me up. Oh, well. Um, I am singing praises because right before Christmas, 1st of December, right before I finished my finals, I went to the doctor and complained to him about my ear and how it was not getting better and could he tell me what he thought. And he came back and he told me, oh, my dryer's peeping. Yeah, at midnight, my dryer. It's 12.30 now. Um, 12.35, actually. Woo! By the way, we are staying up late. Um, he actually looked in my ear and he said, your ear's not infected. I don't see Meniere's disease, so that's something to be grateful for because that is a chronic condition. He told me that I have TMJ. He says, do you have stress in your life? And I actually kind of snorted at the man. Not because I was rude, I was just laughing. And I said, I have four kids. I work full time, I'm going to school. And he went, the four kids, hands down, is enough the reason why you're stressed. But he says, I'm grinding my teeth at night. And that's why my ear is so inflamed. And that's why it's constantly getting infected and irritated. And that's why I'm constantly feeling swimmy-headed and blah, 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 blah. So, ha, 
He gives me a muscle relaxer. Well, here's the great thing. It has to be taken by 8.30 at night. That's not going to happen. So I have to, to take it by like 9 o'clock at the latest so I can fall over somewhere in my house at like 9.40, 9.30, 10 o'clock. So now my schedule is, is to race in, supper's on the table, kids do their homework, bath team and, you know, delegating the baths. Um, we try not to do the two butts in the tub rule because we still have young kids. You know, that's more than you guys want to know. <coughs> but I think after a certain age of development psychologically that they do not need to bathe together because they're, you know, they have personal developments in their body that they're conscious about. And I'm giving you a psychological lesson whether you want one or not. But um, we have timed literally just like that showers. My kids can scrub their bodies serious. Although... More than you want to know, my ten year, my nine year old, cannot seem to wash his forehead. Um, another funny story that you'll appreciate: he washes this and this and this, but he cannot wash this area right here. I test my kids after they come out of the shower and I smell their ears. That's just a funny thing. Did you take a shower? Yeah, did you wash good? Yeah, let me smell you. I sniff his ears. He's gotten good at it because he will make sure that he's shampooed behind his ears. Notice this area to this area. So if my son goes bald, you'll understand. Where he'll have, maybe he'll have hair, you know, not here, but who knows. Did Sonny Bono have a bald patch like that? I don't know. He started getting like these heat bumps, bumps all across his forehead at nine. And we started having to do like bump treatment. And so I did a test one night because I wear bright lipstick at times. And I kissed him on top of his head. Now he's got this sandy, I don't even have his hair because he's one of my, my beautiful adopted babies. And it says it looks, <coughs> my friends tell me that it looks like I had an affair. Because my three kids favor, my other two adopted kids and my biological child favor so much that everybody thinks they're all biologically related. But my middle son looks like I had an affair. That's more than you want to know. I'm fair complected with red hair. And my husband is fair complected with like reddish, darkish dark brown, you know, dark, dark brown hair and brown eyes. And all three of my kids have fair skin, blue eyes, two have blonde hair, and one has like red hair, like strawberry blonde red hair. I think you've seen him before on a video. And the one that you have seen him before in the video, the one that does not wash this section of his hair, um, he has that light brown hair. So I kissed him with my radiant pink lipstick. And he went and took his bath. And he came into the kitchen where I'm cooking supper. I said, oh, did you wash your hair? And he goes, yeah, yeah, look. There was the lipstick still smeared in his hair. And you know, I said, dude, I want to show you something. And so I took my cell phone on and took a picture of the top of his head. And he went, how did that get here? And I said, I kissed you before you took a shower. And he stopped. Oh, my gosh, he was so raging, man, because he'd been caught. But we had to go in and talk about, you know, why we need to shampoo and massage. But that's irrelevant. Um, it's, it's stressful in this house. We have to keep a schedule. And so I'm not saying that my life is stressed with yours. Because we all have stress. And I'm, and I'm sorry. But that's a part of life. That's a part of us living in our great life. And it's also how we manage stress. I found a quote one time that says, You can find out the character of a person when they face so many obstacles. Hunger, tiredness, and tangled Christmas lights. And if uh, if you saw me with tangled Christmas lights, you would think that my character is extremely weak because I say so many cuss words that it's not even funny. <coughs> I don't know why I get so obsessed over a three dollar strand of lights, but <coughs> they just make me so mad. So yes, pre lit trees are the bomb, but I don't have one this year because my pre lit tree, the tree that I liked, didn't have enough lights for my taste. So I bought the unprelit tree and added, you know, as many lights as I wanted because my husband says that my Christmas tree needs to seemingly looks like it's on fire because I like to put that many lights on it. But that's irrelevant. 
Um, I'm rambling because I do that a lot. But I hope you enjoy my rambling because um, then you get to get a little view into me. Um, two things that some of the things that I asked for this year for Christmas, I asked my mother to buy me a book. I'm uh, obsessed with Jen Hatmaker. I don't know, not obsessed. That's not the right word. I enjoy her books, and um, there's another book that I would actually like to show you guys. So if you're in this stash stash acquisition thing, maybe we can kind of, maybe I can find a partner who might want to do this book with me, but um, it's talking about the book seven, and it's talking about removing excess and clutter, so maybe we could kind of do like a mini book club. Who knows? I have the book. Um, the time didn't work for me to do it with my church group because it conflicted with my daughter's, no, at that time, yeah, my daughter's basketball schedule. So I tried to do the book by myself, but if I had someone to really help me be accountable, you know, that would be awesome. But um, seven, but that's not the book I'm talking to you about. I'm talking to you about Jim the Hatmaker. She's hilarious. Um, I think she had a thing on DIY or HGTV, My Big Fat Renovation. Hang on, I'll tell you. Because HGTV, My Big Family Renovation. If you want to YouTube that or go to HGTV's website or whatever and watch it. She is real. She does not, I don't know. I'm on her Facebook post, and, I, and I'm, I enjoy her blog so much, but she's had this book that's come out for quite some time, and it's called For the Love, and it's Fighting for Grace, and I can't read upside down, in a world of impossible standards. Um, it is a Christian book, but at the same time, it says for us to break free of guilt and shame by dismantling the unattainable Pinterest life. Let's get over it. Not everybody can be as perfect as they are with their Christmas ornaments and their house being spotless and always having perfect bodies and perfect food. Um, be liberated enough to love and release the burden of always being right. And this is my biggest affliction here. Escape our impossible standards for parenting and marriage by accepting the standard of mostly good. Now, two of the quotes that have come from this book, and my cell phone just quit, so I pray that my iPad lows. One, it talks about after a certain age in life, your brain starts punking you. And that has been my favorite quote. And for me, that was like 39. It's not that you forgot to walk in the room, but I can be on the phone with my husband, my cell phone that is, looking for my cell phone, trying to leave. Seriously. That's when your brain is punking you. <coughs> or your kid can ask you a question. And you have to sit there and comprehend the question they just asked because it's just like, boo, I don't know. So, my brain's punking me. And last but not least, and I hope you enjoy this, and I hope it doesn't hurt anybody, but my favorite thing, and it's one of my rules with my daughter, leggings are not pants. Um, probably, I hope I don't hurt anybody by saying this, but when she talks about people wearing leggings in the grocery store or leggings to drop their kids off at school, and they're walking around with like their hoodie, their workout shirt, and their leggings. It says those moms who think that outdoor wear, or just women in general who think that outdoor wear is for anything that you do outdoors, it's not. She makes a joke and a comment, Jen Hatmaker does in this book, about how when she meets someone in the store who has leggings on and there's nothing to imagine because you can see the underwear line, either that or that, she feels like she has just been to third base with you. I have laughed so hysterical over that. So, she's not one of those that's going to make you feel creepy. It is really, really a good book. Well, that is all for this week. Um, I'm hoping to have some more stitchy progress and hopefully a finish because, like I said, I am going to a conference tomorrow and I am giving glory to God because I am going to have some quiet time. 
last final thing, I'll challenge you. Um, school stitching. I'm behind on movies, but I finally got to see War Room tonight. Oh my gosh, I cried. Beautiful movie about the power of prayer and bringing a marriage back together. That is just, oh, that was cool. It, it, you know, and I like that movie because it showed people making bad choices and consequences and things actually happen. No, and everything was not hunky-dory perfect. It was actually pretty bad. So I enjoyed it. Um, the other film they did, Courageous and Fireproof. Facing the Giants, awesome. Fireproof and Courageous, two very amazing movies that are impactful and they show you a little bit of humor in the process. But War Room tonight, very impactful. I uh, don't have much eye makeup now from crying, but I did touch up lipsticks. So now I look like I've been slapped around. Oh well, happy stitching. Hope you guys have a great week and I'll try to post again next week and maybe I'll have a finish. Bye.